Hello everyone. Welcome to Extreme Geography channel. My name is Teacher Agre and this channel is dedicated to helping students taking IGCSE Geography to prepare for their final exams in Paper 1, Paper 2 and Paper 4. Today I want to introduce a very simple and short topic called water. It's a Section C topic and I'm going to divide it into three lessons. So this is going to be lesson one. By the end of this lesson, uh, you should be able to know the different sources of water, their advantages and disadvantages. And also you should be able to understand the different methods of supplying water. So let's get started. So let's start with a very simple question. And that is, where is the earth's water? And I'm going to use our pie charts to show the different places uh, or the different sources of water. So from the first chart, uh, you see that our 97.5% is salt water that we find in oceans and seas. And uh, that leaves around 2.5% of fresh water. And this is represented by this small uh, section of the upper pie chart. So out of this 2.5%, let's take a look at the different sources of the fresh water. And number one, the biggest percentage is 79%. And this is water that is stuck in ice caps on top of mountains, uh, all in the Antarctica and Arctic and so many other places, and glaciers, basically frozen water. And then some 20% is found underground in aquifers. And a very, very small proportion, uh, 1%, is water that is available for human use. And then let's take a look at this water that, that is available for human use. 52% uh, of this is found in lakes, while 38% is found in soil. Uh, basically, this water is not actually available for use, but maybe for agriculture since it is found in soils. And then some other water can be found in the atmosphere in form of water vapor, so it cannot be used directly for humans. And then we also have uh, about a very, very small percentage of water that is found in rivers, found in rivers, and still another small proportion found in uh, biological organisms. So you can notice that very, very little water is available for human human consumption. Now let us go ahead and uh, see the difference between groundwater and surface water. So surface water is the water that is found in rivers, lakes or any other surface cavities and uh, this water is very easy to access but may be polluted easily by different human activities and therefore might uh, not be very good for human use when that happens. Lakes and rivers may dry out. Uh, you might have uh, heard or studied about the RSC, uh, which is found in Europe and uh, it dried up because of uh, too much extraction and also as a result of a lot of evaporation since it is found uh, within a desert location. And uh, of course, during the dry seasons, uh, some rivers might dry out and therefore water is not available for human consumption. Oceans and seas uh, provide the largest and reliable water supply, but the water is all salty and therefore not safe for human consumption and can only be used if it is desalinated. Desalination is the process of moving salt from the water. And uh, research has shown that uh, water that is desalinated has a very poor taste uh, compared to the natural water. So that is a disadvantage. For groundwater, uh, we say this is water that is, that is contained in a subsurface layer of soil or porous rocks that we can also call aquifers. This water can be obtained by uh, digging wells. Uh, these are basically very deep holes uh, that go and uh, reach the water and they can extract this water by using containers. We can also access underground water through sinking of boreholes. Later on, we will look at pictures of what boreholes are, for those of you who may not already know. And then we can also use electric pumps to pump water from deeper in the ground 
and uh, it is able to reach the surface for human use. However, we also need to understand that this groundwater is very hard to reach since it is very, very deep in the crust. It is also very expensive to extract and uh, this is because it requires advanced technology and we notice that some LEDCs that have uh, very few resources and also very limited technology might not be able to make use of this groundwater. And uh, some of it might be saline. Uh, saline means it might contain salt, especially the water that is the underground water near oceans and seas. Uh, the other disadvantage of this is that underground water is available in small quantities, especially in desert areas, and therefore it might get exhausted or it might yeah, dry out very easily and people will have no access to water. So next up, we want to look at the different uses of water by rank. Uh, this might not be the same rank for all countries. We will later on look at the ranks in both LEDCs. But generally, uh, most of the water on Earth is used for agricultural purposes, and this could be through irrigation, and of course, some of the water is used for animals to drink. Number two is domestic use, and uh, of course, we know the different uses of water in homes. Uh, one is washing, and uh, of course, with the developed countries, they have washing machines, they have showers, toilets, the flush, and swimming pools, and any other function that you could think about, cooking and whatsoever. Number three is industry, and uh, here water is used as raw material, uh, especially in the manufacture of beverages and other food products. And then water can also be used in industries to cool machines. Number four is tourism. And of course, this is the water is used in hotels and uh, for different purposes like shower, uh, toilets and a lot of swimming pools on most five-star hotels. And in number five, we have uh, water that is not actually being used by man, but this water is actually lost through evaporation, through evaporation. So that is how water is being used. A question can come, you should not be able to fail a uh, simple question on the uses of water. Be able to give different examples of the ways in which water is being used. So let's move on to the water usage between LEDCs and MEDCs. We want to compare and we see in LEDCs what is the water mostly used for, while in MEDCs what is the water mostly used for. So the very functions that we have already looked at are the ones that we are going to rank for both LEDCs and MEDCs. For those who might not know what LEDCs are, these are low economically developed countries, while MEDCs are more economically developed countries. Okay, so in LEDCs, we very know that our agriculture is the most important economic activity in almost all LEDCs. And therefore, agriculture is the number one use of water, or most of the water, or much of the water in LEDCs is used in agriculture. And uh, for MEDCs, the number one use of water is industry, because MEDCs have so many industries, and therefore, a lot of water is spent there. You can see that industry ranks number two in uh, in LEDCs, and this is because LEDCs have a very small section of industries. They are still having very few industries and therefore the amount of water is very, very low that is used in that sector. Number three in LEDCs, we have tourism. Uh, even though we have hotels um, that use a lot of water, you find that some of these hotels are small and are they have very, very limited facilities and therefore they use little amount of water. And number four is domestic use. Uh, that means that uh, domestic uses of water are very, very minimal in LEDCs. This does not mean that people don't use water in the houses, 
but you find that they use very little water uh, for reasons like uh, in LEDCs, you find that in homes, they wash uh, utensils uh, using uh, maybe a basin and therefore they don't spend so much water. Taking a shower, sometimes they shower from the rivers or streams or they use basins and these things do not take a lot of water. Uh, but when it comes to to MEDCs, you notice that our domestic usage of water ranks number three. And that means so much water is being used at home. And this is because uh, they have uh, these machines that take so much water, like washing machines. Or we have uh, dishwashers and bathtubs and so many other things. And then in number four, agriculture, you find that agriculture in MEDCs is a very, very small sector. And therefore, it by far uses the least amount of water. However, the amount of water that is used in MEDCs in agriculture is much, much more than the water that is used in the agricultural sector of LEDCs. And this is because you find that in MEDCs, they use advanced uh, irrigation systems, for example, the center pivot irrigation uh, systems, and uh, so much water is being used in uh, this kind of way. So that is about the comparisons. Let's now move on to the next thing. And uh, we want to look at the details of the reasons why MEDCs use more water for domestic purposes. I've already hinted on a few of them. And uh, let's dig into. So you find that in MEDCs, every house is connected to piped water. And therefore, people use this water uh, without fear of losing water or water getting finished. Uh, so they use a lot of water. Number two, water is very cheap. Uh, you find that the price of a unit of water is very low in MEDCs compared to LEDCs. And therefore, uh, people use so much water extravagantly. And then on top of that, people in MEDCs are very rich and therefore can afford to pay for a higher water bill. So even though the prices would be higher, these people are able to afford. And then also the, the fact that the people are rich, they have they can afford uh, electronics, for example, washing machines and dishwashers, and uh, these things take a lot of water, like we already mentioned. You find that are at least 50% or more of houses in MEDCs might have our swimming pools. And these swimming pools definitely use uh, so many liters of water. And then the other thing is that in MEDCs, people use overhead showers. Uh, they have a lot of bathtubs. They also have uh, hot tubs and, and these uh, facilities take so much water. And lastly, most people have flower gardens in their backyards, uh, which they irrigate very often. And that would mean that so much water is used at home. So talking about hot tubs, these are some of the things that take so much water in people's homes. And down here, we have a beautiful washing machine, very easy to use, but takes so, so much water. Okay, I believe that we are moving smoothly in this lesson. And now we want to look at our last segment of this lesson. And uh, this is gonna be the methods of supplying water. And normally this is the section C question, and therefore you need to use a case study knowledge. We will look at a case study later, but let's take a look at the general methods of supplying water. So water supply is the provision of water by public utilities, uh, commercial organizations, or by community endeavors. It involves the transfer of water from its source to the point of usage, and uh, let's take a look at the different methods. One is using pipes to supply water uh, to connected houses and commercial premises. Uh, of course, I'm sure that every person right here listening in this lesson understands what we call uh, pipes. And uh, water is connected from the sources to the households or to the places where water is needed. So. 
this is a tap and uh, water is available number two is an installation of boreholes uh, which drain water from underground sources or aquifers so like i had promised this is what a borehole looks like and uh, this young lady is trying to draw water from underground using this and very common in uh, dry areas let's move on to see another important source of water uh, supply of water uh, this is establishment of water kiosks uh, these are kiosks where people can buy water already stored in containers or in tanks and in most cases this water is already purified and can even be drunk especially in ledcs where water must be boiled you find that these kiosks actually sell purified or clean water so that's a water kiosk in rwanda called iriba that is an organization that supplies water through kiosks number next is construction of protected wells around an aquifer where communities can access water by manually drawing water using pipes are uh, using buckets rather you can see this young boy is uh, drawing water from a very deep well and they have a pulley system that they are connecting to a bucket that they dip down and get water and they are able to pull it up using the pulley system the physics people you should be able to understand this quite well uh, number next is our uh, construction of dams and reservoirs uh, along rivers where excess water can be collected and easily accessed for use by households and industries this is a picture of a dam right across here uh, this is what we call a dam this barricade along the river and behind is what we call the reservoir so water in the reservoir can easily be accessed and can be used by people for different purposes uh, next up let's take a look at another use uh, another way of supplying water installation of stand pipes uh, the stand pipes uh, pull water from underground and they bring water to where it is being demanded this water can be used directly from the connected taps like you can see from down here or can be stored in tanks and used so many organizations these days actually have uh, resorted to using this kind of system and they are not using water from the government supply uh, next one is water harvesting uh, this is where uh, rainwater basically is trapped off roofs and uh, it is stored into large tanks and uh, can be used at home i'm sure people from africa or you, you you're able to recognize this uh, this is water that is being tapped or uh, trapped from the roof through the pipe and then it comes into the tank so that is water harvesting okay let's look at our final this is called cloud seeding cloud seeding is the use of chemicals uh, to enhance cloud formation and rainfall uh, rainwater is often uh, used directly over an agricultural region so some of the chemicals they use is silver iodide like you can see from the picture and uh, this chemical is able to mimic the particles that serve, that serve as surfaces for condensation are basically what you call condensation nuclei and they are able to create water droplets and therefore clouds form and we get rainfall girls and boys this marks the end of lesson one and i will see you in uh, lesson two thank you for listening please subscribe uh, share and like the videos See you later.